Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today I'm returning to you after almost a month off without playing pretty much anything for the last month. Um, sorry about the break. Uh, you can see here I'm playing the next installment in my um, Commander the Great War Let's Play, as you will here. Uh, at the end of the last turn, we had just ended our... Uh, our turn, so we're going to be watching the AI here for a little bit. But yeah, um, been out for a while. Last month I've basically been focusing exclusively on school, which is probably what I should be doing. Had a stats, uh, a business stats, and um, a marketing final. Um, I don't think the marketing final went all that well, but all I needed was a 58% to guarantee myself an AB or like an 85 to guarantee myself an A. I was doing really well in that course, so I'm not too worried about that. A little bit more worried about stats. We'll see how that turned out. But um, anyway, this isn't about my uh, my grades or my schooling or anything like that. Um, this is another video about Commander of the Great War. So, um, well, actually, <laughs> maybe, it, maybe it will be a video about, uh, about my my other stuff. Uh, quick uh, aside on the uh, podcast that I had mentioned a couple of videos ago. Uh, still something that we're definitely looking at doing. Belugan and I, we've uh, started discussing and throwing around some ideas. He's actually now just became part of the um, development team for Warfare Sims, the guys who make uh, command modern air naval operations. He's doing that um, on the side in addition to his day job. Uh, I guess they saw his videos, really liked it, and basically asked if he'd join the team, and he's a programmer. So um, he's a little bit more busy now than he was before. Uh, the Scourge of War stuff is really starting to pick up for, um, you know, for myself with a lot of the testing and, and whatnot that's going on there. So a lot of, lot of busy all around, but uh, with school at least coming to about a month-long break, should have some time to get some things hammered out, should still have time to do the podcast. But uh, in general, just been a really, really busy last month and uh, looks to continue to be busy uh, for some time going forward. But anyway, um, as you can see here, the French looks like they're advancing out from Trieste. The um, Russians are being pests as well as they're threatening to encircle Berlin. But hey, remember that great feature in Commander of the Great War, the fact that capital cities cannot be cut off. So um, that's good for the capital city, not all the other guys there. Still trying to reduce this uh, this pocket of Russian troops here to the west of Leipzig. Uh, they've got two more units there. Hopefully we can finish them up next turn. Meanwhile, the Russians are driving on Budapest and uh, threatening to envelop our entire front here in Austria. So while things have stabilized somewhat, Berlin isn't really at, at risk of being destroyed this turn. Uh, they are still dicey, to say the least. Um, actually... If the Russians don't move any other forces in there, um, they may be moving themselves into a pocket of themselves. So that might be something worth trying to exploit. I guess we'll see. Um, still a little, little bit more to go from this turn. But uh, yeah, we're into April of 1916, and things are not looking so hot. Although I will say, um, I don't know if this is like a dummy patch, because I think there was a beta patch that was put out, then pulled back, and then put out, or something like that. So a little bit worried. Um, there may be some... I don't know, the AI just seems not more aggressive, but they're really getting themselves into situations where they're opening themselves up to being cut off there. Although they did just move their line over a bit, so um, we'll see what happens there. Meanwhile, on the Western Front, what's going on here? Um, One French attack, that all they're going to do? Okay, well, no, two French attacks. But hey, they're not uh, two attacks without any casualties on our side, so that's a good thing. Um, I just recently shortened up my line a bit, pulled back a few troops to, uh, send them west. And, uh, these French attacks aren't going well. Zero casualties on my end, anyway. A little bit of disruption there for that unit. But, uh, that's good. We just recently upgraded some of our troops. I'll be honest, I haven't played the game in about a month either, so... A little bit rusty on everything that I've been doing. Sometimes it's kind of hard to, to follow Let's Plays or keep Let's Plays going. Uh, more so because you can't remember what you were thinking, what you were strategizing. This thing's been going on for months now um, with long breaks between gameplay. But um, 
Yeah, and I, I want to get back to some more of my other videos. You know, I, I feel like I don't do a whole lot of videos uh, lately. I did a lot early in this series where I talk about the history behind it in addition to talking about the gameplay. You know, interestingly enough, a lot of people criticize um, turn-based games for being a little bit boring and maybe not as exciting to watch on, uh, on YouTube. But I do find, I think... A turn-based game more so than a real-time game. You know, a real-time game like uh, Ultimate General Gettysburg or something like that where things are just happening so quick, it's easy to lose track of what you're doing in the game. You know, if you're trying to talk about uh, talk about things, it's also easy to lose track of what you're trying to say if you're trying to do things rapidly. So as far as a, a quality gameplay experience, it can be very easy to um, fail to provide both good gameplay and good commentary if you're commenting while you're playing. You know, I, I'm not going to claim to be an all-star streamer. That there are there are people who can do it very well. I'm not going to be claiming to be one of them. But my point is that a turn-based game is interesting because it really gives you a natural pause that's built into the game that uh, makes discussion easier because you're watching the AI do things, but, you know, there, there's not really any kind of pressure to... Um, you can always go back and see what happened afterwards. So there's almost a bit of a, uh, it's almost a, a benefit uh, in in that sense to uh, playing that type of game when you're commentating. I was trying to reduce the Russians here. So there we go. One of the Russian units is reduced. I'll pull this Bulgarian cavalry unit. They're fully out of supply now, by the way, as you can see with their uh, little red circles. So, two Russian units destroyed. That's excellent. Meanwhile, the Russians are threatening to cut off Berlin. So that's not something we want to see happen. Um, I don't know what I want to do with this guy. I think what we'll do, we'll pull this guy off the front. Although it's tempting to attack that armored car. Pull this guy off the front. We'll bombard these guys as best we can. There we go. Okay. So we just destroyed. Oops. We just destroyed that unit, and we're going to have to use this core unit and pull it back into Berlin. So we just destroyed three Russian units there. That's a nice little perk, if you will. And. We're just going to kind of keep these guys in place. You know, we've got quite a few troops over here, and we don't, there's not a whole lot of Russians that we see on our front. But if we go south, you know, we're really, really in trouble down here with all these, all these Russian units. And they did fill in this gap here, unfortunately, so they lessened the likelihood that they'll be cut off there. Risked Vienna by evacuating it here. Actually, I want to repair these guys. They're not going to probably hold out, but... I should not have pulled them back. All right. Okay, so some reinforcements uh, flowing to the, the lines there, attempting to hopefully stabilize the situation a little bit. Probably not. The Russians just have so many troops, it's ridiculous. And uh, a hole has opened up on our Italian front, which is a bit concerning. Um... Okay. So we just destroyed an allied armored car unit there. That's a positive. 
Let's see. Oh. No ammo for your artillery. Okay. Dogfight. The world has witnessed the first dogfight between armed fighter aircraft. It's now war on land, air, and sea. So apparently these uh, French aircraft must have intercepted ours. So not what I wanted to see. What? Ah, oh, crap. How many troops I can rail there, do I? Nope. Let's see. What's the diplomatic situation? Still at least eight turns from those guys coming into the war. I'm just worried if I commit these guys against the Russians that um, I'm not going to be able to get them back. But I kind of feel like I have to. So we'll do that. Situation bleak. I mean, we could fire off artillery just for the heck of it. Do some damage to some Russian cavalry there. You can see there we've cut off Rostov. So that's nice. Very nice. Let these guys reform here. The Ottomans don't have... Like any reinforcements coming anytime soon. Okay. Crap. All right. Well, we're probably overextended here in the Caucasus, but we've got to keep on, keep on trying to drive the Russians. So, again, taking casualties we don't really want to take, but Rostov should fall the next turn. It's amazing how worthless these Russian cities are. I mean, just look, everything is a 1. Literally everything except Moscow, which is a 7. It's like these cities don't matter industrially anyway. Um, yeah, not really much to do on the Western Front for the Germans. Let's see here. I guess we could certainly reinforce some of our units. Um, not really. There's not a whole lot of guys that need more reinforcements. So I guess we'll build some stuff. Production. We'll build a garrison, a German garrison unit. And we can build a Bulgarian garrison unit. I probably should have upgraded. That probably would have been the better, the, the wiser thing to do. But I need more units too, so they'll be there in two turns. Um, what do we want to do? Well, we can bombard these guys. Not that it does much good, but hey, keep the Russians tied down, right? That is the goal. All right. Well, I guess we might as well end this turn. I don't really... The Eastern Front is a fluid mess. Italy's... It really, really needs to be figured out. Hey, that's a lucky surprise there. Um, <sighs> yeah, Italian front is a mess. We need more men. We don't have enough to cover all of this ground, especially in this frickin' Russian front. Shouldn't the Russians be falling apart into revolution by now? They've lost a lot of men. I mean, I guess they haven't been driven back to the gates of St. Petersburg or anything like that. But still, they've lost a lot. Oh, no. Darn British battleships intercepting our commerce. Ah. <sighs> Russians breaking out of their encirclement at Rostov. But they're probably weak enough that we can finish off, especially since they'll be in range of that artillery unit. 
The Ottomans don't have enough of anything except for artillery. That I wish they could share. By artillery, I mean ammunition. Um, I really need, like, can they just give me, like, five turns of just, oh. Uh, can the, the allies just give me five turns of doing nothing, please? That's an interesting shift away from Triest. Those French are awfully exposed now. Yeah, the Russians are going to break through there, aren't they? Come on. Uh, come on, Russians. Let me guess. You're going to fill... Like, where are all these guys coming from? Huh. The Russians didn't have 20 million men under arms, did they? Oh, we've made it almost 50 turns in, but <laughs> Budapest, which I think is, I believe, I, I, I could be wrong. I believe Budapest was the capital of Hungary. Aust the Austro-Hungarian Empire is an interesting empire in that the Kingdom of Hungary and the um, Empire of Austria were kind of un united. I want to say in, in 19 or 1848, the Austrians rebelled. There was some kind of rebellion in Austria in 1848, as well as other places. I know Germany had a whole bunch. But uh, basically, I believe that's when Austro the Austro-Hungarian Empire came into being, was that the, um, you know, the Allies, or, or basically the Austrians had to make some concessions to the to the Hungarians. Oh my God, what is going on? Holy crap. More and more troops just pouring in. But anyway, they, they had to make some kind of concessions, and it was kind of like a dual monarchy. It was, I think they called it the dual monarchy. I, I'm not really up on Austrian history, but I have to say that they called it the dual monarchy. So that makes sense. You're kind of the king of two two empires. And the Habsburgs were in charge, you know, the, the royal family. But... Uh, interesting because they, they have two separate capitals. I mean, Vienna was the capital of the whole empire, but uh, Budapest, I want to say, was the capital of Hungary. And they're very different. I mean, Austria had a whole bunch of nationalities. I mean, they had Croats, they had Serbians, they had Hungarians, they had Austrians, they had a whole bunch of, of different ethnicities. I hope Croat, Croat's not an insult, is it? That's not like I, I don't think it is. Anyway, I'm, I'm not sure. Croatian, uh, if, if that's more correct. Okay, so, um, yeah. What the heck are we supposed to do now? Well, that armored car is awfully exposed. We've got... See, the interesting thing is naval artillery doesn't take up much. So I'm certainly glad they decided to move along the coast there. I don't know what that means. I guess I can't do that. Okay. Um, Cavalry's probably not going to destroy that, is it? Probably not. Um, but infantry can't get there. So, I guess we're going to do that. Only one? Really? Mm, can I get another battleship in there and finish him off? There we go. Using the Navy to some effect. Now I can use this guy against the... Um, air units there. All right, so more bad turns for the Russians, at least. That's that's always a good thing. The more bad things we can do to the Russian menace, the better. So we nearly destroyed that unit. So that is good. 
All right, so we destroyed a Russian armored car unit, and we destroyed a Russian air unit, nearly destroyed a Russian cavalry unit. And I think that's probably about all we can do there. Meanwhile, oh my god. Kind of falling back in the wrong direction, being driven away from Budapest. Budapest. Oh. All right. So there, we destroyed a Russian unit north of Budapest. Russians got a little bit overextended themselves there, so that's a good thing. Kind of falling backwards. So we just retook whatever that city is called. Um... Hopefully those guys can hold out. This guy needs to be reinforced. All right, so the situation's not stabilized. We're definitely falling back here on the Austrian front, but we did at least inflict some casualties on the Russians, destroying one unit north of Budapest and one unit near Debrecht with limited casualties ourselves. Meanwhile, on the Italian front, interestingly enough, the Allies appear to be content with getting themselves cut off. At least this French unit has driven way past their ability to support it. So we'll go ahead and do that. And destroy an allied balloon unit. Yay! Okay. And an Italian infantry unit. Score! Alright, so... The situation isn't all gloom and doom. Like, why can't they move down here? I don't understand that. Um, stupid Italian battleship, go away. So, that's got to be good for, like, morale and victory points, right? How are we doing on that? Austria's national will is pretty low, probably due to the fact that they keep getting crushed by the Russians. Everyone else is pretty happy, so that's good. Everyone else is above 100% of national will. So uh, keep on bringing the victories, I guess, right? All right. Let's reinforce that air unit, these ground units. And where are we diplomatically? The Romanians are itching to, to join the fight, it would appear. Germans... Western Front is incredibly stable, so we'll focus on getting these guys back up. We've got a whole bunch of uh, dollars to spend here. We just spent quite a bit, but then the other thing we want to do is, if we can, upgrade some of these guys. There you go. Better artillery. So there you have it. Those guys are all upgraded. Now we've got to go back to the um, Ottoman front. <laughs> oh, great. Those Ottoman troops that I just figured would finish off the Russians are now cut off because of that Russian move out of Rostov. Oh, well. Not for long, they're not. We'll pull them back. Ooh, I don't want to. We'll pull them back a bit just uh, to be safe. I don't want them stuck out there if the Russians do show up. Now the question is, where's the right direction to drive? Moscow's a long way away, but I think what we're going to do, since we are incredibly overextended at this point, this guy's going to fall back. You're going to fall back to Ascatran or whatever that place is called. We'll keep this one unit here in Zaristan. Hopefully they won't come down from Sartov or whatever it's called. Um, I think we'll leave one garrison unit this way blocking the rail line north. So we're going to put one unit in Zaristan, which is uh, Stalingrad. We'll leave one unit on this rail line here from the north. The other unit will stay in 
uh, Turkestan, so it'll have three units all pretty close by to provide support if the Russians do launch an um, underpowered offensive. And then this group here of, what, four army units is going to drive. We're going to drive toward Dipranopusk, or whatever it's called, taking that city, which is, I believe, the site of a lot. No, Dip that's not. That's geographic. Maybe it is. I don't think it's the site of a lot of the fighting in the current war with the uh, with the Russian separatists or what have you in Ukraine. It, it's spelled similar, but I do think it is different. And anyway, we're going to take this city here. That'll protect our flank. We'll leave one unit there. We're going to drive north on Krakow and Kursk and Orel and Tula and uh, drive toward Moscow, which I don't think we have any chance of taking. But that's going to be the Ottoman goal of that offensive. Uh, should also give us, as we move this unit here, a little bit of time to breathe. So we'll go ahead and give some of these guys... These guys, I want to move them this way, right? Yeah. I want to give them reinforcements, but apparently these guys don't get reinforcements. Okay. Meanwhile, on this front with the British, nothing else happened. Good. Oh, and I didn't realize I had this army unit here. Okay. Move them this way to get them toward Europe. Wow, I had a whole army unit and didn't even realize I had them. That's cool. Um, let's see. We're still seven to eight turns from the Romanians coming in, so I think we're going to pull this Romanian army unit out. Rail them in here. Hopefully we can get in behind these Russians and maybe wreak some havoc like we have up near Berlin where the Russians still have, what, six, uh, four, no, three army, full-size army units, three garrisons and a cavalry unit. Uh, so they still have quite a bit up there. I think they might still outnumber us there, but um, there you have it. So here we are on the western front. Everything's pretty stable. Um... Yeah, we're just going to stay dug in. I was debating this last turn falling back to maybe a line around Liege to shorten our, our line by a few to free up some extra units, but uh, the only place I'd probably send them right now is the Italian front, uh, which is really hard to gauge what's happening, and I can just throw the uh, units currently in production down there. Um, so yeah, that's going to just about do it for this turn. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and end the turn before we, we jump back in and uh, play or, you know, end the, end the video. Cause we are going to end it. We're almost done. I appreciate you tuning in again here. Uh, guys, I, like I said, I, I'm not doing a good job in, in keeping up to date with videos and, uh, that's my own personal, you know, personal life type stuff. I do this for fun, but, um, I do, you know, I've seen quite a bit of progress. November, or October and November were my two best months by far. Had uh, over 40,000 uh, views in both months, which is more than uh, more than I've ever had before by quite a bit. Um, I think the previous high was like 33 or 34,000. A lot of that had to do with uh, Ultimate General coming out full release on Steam, and I already had some popular videos up on that. Not a lot of people had videos on it, so it was kind of one of those things where, you know, it probably did really well because there really weren't a whole lot of alternative options, not because mine was the best. Same thing probably true for Buzz Aldrin's Space Program Manager, which came out in November. Uh, Ultimate General came out in October. But, uh, you know, I like to see that progress. Hard to keep building on progress, though, if, you, uh, if you're if you not releasing constant content, which I haven't been, uh, and that's my own fault. As you can see there, the Russians are still uh, being jerks on the... Uh, on the Austrian front, continuing to destroy units at a more rapid rate than I can destroy theirs. Um, they just launched an attack on Berlin proper, which is not good. <sighs> and the Allies continue to launch attacks on the Italian front. So they're pretty much on the offensive all around the globe. The only place where things seem relatively calm is the West Front, and, uh, you know, who, who knows? As I'm saying that, the, things might change. I will say this. It seems ridiculously odd that every single attack on the Western Front is a zero-to-zero zero result. Like, are they just probing our lines? I thought the Western Front battles were supposed to be the incredibly deadly ones. Shouldn't they be taking, like, two or three casualties um, to my one or something like that? I guess casualties were pretty even, but still, it's just like, okay... 
attack, no one dies. On either side, attack, no one dies. On either side. But anyway. Um, lots of holes opening up in these lines as the French advance deeper into Germany, despite being cut off. Because that's logical. Mm. <sighs> There's the naval movement phase, more merchant ships. Hopefully some will get through. I need those supplies badly. And a whole bunch of technological developments. Mine lane gear. Steel helmets for the Oster, for the Bulgarians. Concrete dugouts for the Germans. Depth charges. Centralized fire control. Two garrison units ready. So quite a bit happened there that turn. Um, Russians continue to move troops along the coast. Which is good for me because it's cheap artillery. And they make for good target practice there. I didn't really cut them off yet, but anyway, so that was good. Hmm. What do I want to do? The Russians have pretty much used that time to reinforce themselves. Not good for me. I really wish, I feel like I just don't have a capable army. It's just everybody dies. That's the rule of the army. Everybody dies. No one wins. Maybe that's just the rule when you're fighting the, uh, the Russians. Rules when you're fighting the Russians. No ammo for artillery anyway. Um, the French are cut off, so that's good. What do I want to do? I don't know. Um, hmm. Would I cut them off if I advance south toward Triest? They have a port city there, so I think they've got a port city there. They've got naval control, so I don't think that would count as encirclement, so that would kind of be pointless. So I guess I'll just finish off that French unit there. And dig in, reinforce. Diplomacy still has a six to eight turns from the uh, entry of those other guys. I'm marching these guys slowly across no man's land. And we're now advancing on whatever the name of that city is. So it looks like the Russians have some small garrisons in this general vicinity. Why don't I have real units here? Now you can see here we've taken this entire uh, peninsula as we fall back toward Akastram. Not really a setback, but the first reversal, if you will. And... OK. 
Okay, so some reinforcements to the Ottomans there. Should really upgrade these guys. Anyway, so the Ottomans are done. Bulgarians, I could bring in some more rails. I could probably threaten the rear of the Russian force here if I do that. Problem is I probably won't get back in time when the Romanians eventually declare war against us, but hey, it is what it is. Um, Keep these guys in reserve. All right, so these German reserves here getting reinforced. And then we've got two new units ready to deploy. These guys are needed near Italy, I would say. And the, uh, are these Bulgarians or Austrians? They're Bulgarians, aren't they? We'll just put them here. So yeah, that's where we're at. Um, we zoom out here, we can see the Central Powers uh, by their very name, commanding the center of the map here. Um, still holding on to Belgium. Uh, situation on the Western Front, stat static. Situation on the Italian Front, pretty fluid-ish. Doesn't seem like either side at this point has sufficient resources to advance. Situation in Austria is grim. Russians overwhelming us. Meanwhile, the Berlin Front has stabilized somewhat. It's still a tenuous position, but it's stabilized a little bit. And the Ottoman offensive into the heartland of Russia. Look at all this land we've taken from the Russians. <laughs> they don't even give a damn. They're just like, now nah, we're going to keep on plowing ahead here in the West. Who cares about the underbelly? You know, if we advanced, what... I don't know, however many miles that is, that, that's halfway to Moscow. Um, so apparently, who cares? Um, there's got to be some kind of political consequence. The Russian national morale has to, I would say it would be low, but keep destroying all these units, so that might be offsetting it, I don't know. But anyway, uh, that's going to do it for this video. I appreciate you tuning in, and until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying, I'm back. <laughs>